everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. I've been married to a covert narcissist for almost 20 years. I'm separated from him now and what I do with this channel is I use my real life experiences to get information out there to people about what narcissism really is, what it looks like, what it does to you and what it does to your family. Before I get into today's video, I'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed to my channel, left a comment under a video, sent me an email. Recently, I reached the 1000 subscriber mark and that was so gratifying to me and I know I wouldn't have been able to reach it without all of you. So when I tell you I'm grateful, I'm truly grateful and thankful and I appreciate every one of you. I started this channel last summer and I wanted to help people who have suffered narcissistic abuse, who are in narcissistic relationships. I know that pain. I was in a narcissistic relationship for almost 20 years and it wasn't until I was married already for around 17 years that I even knew what narcissism was. Prior to that, if you had said something about narcissism, I would have thought it was somebody who was vain, who thought that they were good looking. I didn't know that it's a real mental illness with serious consequences with the people that are in relationships with them. So when I first discovered it, I was horrified but at the same time I had some relief I thought all right now we know because I was in this relationship for so long and I didn't understand why he was the way he was I knew I was a good wife I knew the things that I did for him so when he would give me in return silent treatments he would be emotionally abusive he was a horrible father these things confused me I couldn't understand it when I knew about what narcissistic personality disorder was Suddenly, I understood it made sense. There were real names for what I was experiencing, you know, stonewalling, hoovering, flying monkeys. These were real things. And I believed like so many of you, like most people, all right, now we know it's going to get better. He's going to get better. We'll get therapy or whatever it is. He's going to change. He just needs to know because you wouldn't want to be that way. You know, so often narcissists get away with things because we put our own feelings on them. We empathize, we sympathize and we think, well, geez, I wouldn't want somebody to do this to me. I would want to change. That's the whole issue. What you would do is not what the narcissist will do. Narcissists do not have a conscience. They don't feel empathy. They're void. They're empty of, of emotions inside. They can only feel negative emotions, anger, you know, jealousy, that type of thing. That's who a narcissist is. So just because you would do something doesn't mean that they would. The real reality, and I, I don't like saying this because I understand how people feel. When you're at the beginning, when you're first discovering this, you believe this person can change and you don't want to leave the relationship. That's a horrifying thought. I get that. I didn't want my relationship to be over either. I believed he could change. I knew he would do it. Why wouldn't he do it? Of course he will. But really and truly, there's no known case. There's no person who has ever been a narcissist. Have, well, there's not a person that had narcissistic personality disorder and now doesn't wasn't somebody that was being abusive and cruel to their family, you know, with narcissistic traits and now isn't. Now, don't confuse that with somebody who's immature. There are situations, many situations, where somebody can kind of be a jerk when they're younger in their teens or 20s or who knows, even older, and then they change. You know, they mature. They become a responsible adult, a kind person, and they're not the way that they were. You know, I'm in my 40s now. I would not want you to judge me on how I was when I was 20. I'm a completely different person now. But that's different than narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder, it's not possible to change that. You know, if you look at it, like I have brown eyes. I'm always going to have brown eyes. That can't change. Now, I could buy, say, blue contact lenses and put them over my brown eyes. And then you see me and it looks like I have blue eyes. But underneath, I really have brown eyes. So it doesn't matter what mask a narcissist wears. You need to remember who they are at their core. That's the real person. The mask is nothing. It's just who they're pretending to be at that moment. The mask, you cannot have a relationship with the mask. If you're with a narcissist, there is no possibility of a genuine relationship. There's no stability in your relationship. There's no sustained happiness. Everything depends on the narcissist's moods. You end up walking on eggshells. You're afraid. It hurts your children. This is all a reality. The truth is that nothing is going to change until you do. 
a narcissist can't or they won't. Either way, it's up to you. Now, I know it's terrifying. I have been terrified myself. It took God to get me out of my relationship in the first place. I was miserable in my marriage. He was so bad, particularly at the end, because I wasn't giving him supply. I'm going to talk about supply in a minute. But I'll tell you how I ended up getting out of my relationship. The last day we were together, he was abusing himself in front of me and the kids. And I had to call 911 because I was afraid. I was afraid he was going to hurt us. So the police came, ambulance came, and he blamed me. He lied and told the police, told the paramedics that I had abused him. So now there was an allegation of abuse in my home and Child Protective Services got involved about me. So I had told my ex so many times in the past, do not make me choose between you and the kids. Don't make me do it. That was the one thing I knew I would choose my kids. He made me make that choice. I had to choose him or the kids. It wasn't even a choice. It was easy. I chose the kids. So he hasn't lived with me, with us since that day. And that was in December of 2019. So when you're with a narcissist, it's only doom and disaster. This person who I was married to, I was a good wife to him. He wanted me to be arrested and taken away and maybe lose our kids because of his lies. Now, I know not everybody might be that bad, but recognize this same person had also told me how much he loved me, how much he wanted to be a good husband, you know, all, all these things. But this was who he is. So it's like me with the brown eyes, you know. He covered himself up. He pretended, you know, he had the blue eyes, that he was a good man, that he loved me, he loved the kids, he would do anything for me, he would die for me. I mean, these are things he said to me. But at the end of the day, he also took those blue contacts out and I saw who he really was. He wanted to be arrested. He wanted to watch me be hauled off to a squad car for something I didn't do. And then that also put me through two months of torture because I had a CPS investigation against me and everybody knew it wasn't real, you know, but they still had to do it because there was that allegation. They can't just write it off. This is who this person really was. This is what it took for me to get out of the relationship. So maybe it'll take something like that happening to you. I hope not. Part of my channel is to help and encourage and have you recognize things before it gets to that point, before you have a tragedy, before you have your kids being interviewed by Child Protective Services. These things can happen. Narcissists possess you. You are not a person to a narcissist. You're like you're a possession. Think about a child, like a toddler, who has a favorite toy. It's their possession. If you take it away, if you try to take it away, or if you tell them you have to share this toy, they will freak out. They will have a full-blown temper tantrum. Narcissists will do that as well. If they think, if they know that their supply, their toy, you, is going away, they're going to react violently. Now, not necessarily physically violently, but emotionally and violently, they're going to freak out. Think about what you would do if the worst possible thing happened to you. So think about what the worst possible thing you can imagine. Like for me, it would be something happening to my kids, something bad happening to my kids. When I first moved into my house, I was busy with the movers and packing and doing a bunch of stuff. And my kids were much younger at the time. My son was only seven. And so I told the kids that they could go play. You know, there's 40 acres of woods behind us. So I told them they go in the woods. They could, you know, be in the house, whatever. So they were going to be in the area. But I knew they were off playing. So later, I started looking for them. And I couldn't find them. So after I was calling them for a while, and I went in every room of the house, and I'm trying to find them, I started to panic. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, no, they've been kidnapped. Somebody's hurting them right now. My, my kids are being murdered. My daughter's being raped. This is what I'm thinking in my head. So I started panicking, and I'm running through the woods, screaming at the top of my lungs, terrified. I felt real terror. If I had found my kids with somebody hurting them, I would have went crazy on this person. They had done something to my children, my possession as it is. That's what a narcissist is doing. If you find out who they are, if you take their mask off and they know that you know, I mean, if, if, you, if they know that you are aware of who they are, they will go crazy crazy. They won't be able to stand that. So just like, you know, if I, if something happened to my kids, I would have went crazy on that person. 
I was a second away from calling the police. My hand was on the phone when suddenly my kids came upstairs in the basement. They were in the basement. I had no idea. The relief I felt was instantaneous, but I had fear, panic. I was terrified. That really is how a narcissist will feel. They can't let that happen. Narcissists pretend or you think that they're these strong people. You know, that's how I thought my husband was. But the truth is that they are weak. They do not have the ability to have any real power. You hold all the power in the relationship. And it's something they have to keep hidden from you. They don't want you to know this. So they put on an act and pretend that they're so wonderful. Again, like I have my blue contacts in, right? Like I'm pretending I have blue eyes. They're pretending that they're somebody that they aren't. And they can be good actors so you can believe it. But when I'm telling you the truth, they're incredibly weak. They really are. Think about like a drug addict. A drug addict has to have their drug. They have to have their supply, right? So you're a supply to a narcissist. You're like that drug. They can't live without it. They're afraid. This is why addicts can be dangerous if they think they can't have the drug, if they need it and they can't get it. They're always trying to avoid being sick. They're always trying to avoid feeling what's really inside them. Because somebody who does drugs, who does drugs to the point where they're an addict, has issues they're trying to hide. They're trying to run away from pain. It's a coping mechanism. That's like narcissism. It's a coping mechanism. They don't want to feel the pain of who they really are. So they mask it by using supply, right? Just like somebody might use cocaine or whatever else, you know, they're using you. So if you're not going to be there, they're not going to take that well. They're going to react and they could react violently. Now, I'm not saying that a narcissist will be violent, but it's important to recognize that they could be. You know, most narcissists aren't going to be, and I don't want to panic people or make you paranoid. But I do want to say, if you are afraid that your narcissist could be physically violent, don't just accept that. Don't just hope it's not going to happen. You need to start learning to take action to protect yourself. You know, when you're in these relationships, you're so used to being trauma bonded. You're codependent. You know, you do whatever the narcissist says. You're always afraid to upset the narcissist. And that doesn't end the day you end the relationship. It takes a while. For some people, it takes years. You know, for me, it took a few months, really, for me to get to the point. It probably, you know, it probably took about two months. And, you know, I was starting to feel better at that point. But before that, you know, I was terrified. You know, it was horrible. And I was always worried about what he was doing, what he was thinking. Is he going to be mad if I do this or I do that? That's your reality. So if you're doing that and you're letting somebody get away with scaring you for your physical safety, please think twice about that. Really consider that. Talk to somebody. Get help. If you feel like this person could hurt you, getting a restraining order is really a good idea. You can't let this person bully you anymore. You can't worry excessively about what they're going to think. You have to do what's best for you. Because remember, this person is weak. You have all the power. So you're thinking that you're going to upset them and something bad's going to happen because you're doing what's right for you for probably the first time in the relationship. But the truth is that they are like a little child. You know, they don't have any emotional control. They don't have any control at all. Everything is dependent on you being in your place. So they're going to act up and they're going to be scary. Because it's scary to see an adult have a temper tantrum. You know, and especially if you're a woman, you're small like I am. And, you know, your, your ex is a big guy. There's a huge weight difference between my ex and I. So it's scary to think that he could hurt me. Maybe he would. I don't know. So if you feel that way, get a restraining order. What I did, I changed all the locks in my house. I'm also armed I, I have a, and I have a security alarm because I'm afraid of my ex. I don't think he's going to be physically violent towards me. I really don't. But I don't know. Somebody who's out of control is unpredictable. So you need to take your safety carefully. Now, another thing that I did, my ex was in a mental hospital at one point. And I did not want him coming home when he was in the mental hospital. I was terrified of him coming home. And my pastor was trying to talk me out of letting him come home. Now, at this point, I was so trauma bonded. I couldn't, and I didn't think I could. You know, an issue I've had with my relationship is I was a stay-at-home mom for the entirety of the marriage. So I don't have a career to fall back on. I wasn't, you know, I don't, it's not like I can just make it easily on my own. That was a real fear. And that, I know that's probably something that other people deal with too. So I felt like I could, I didn't have a choice. I had to let him come back to the house, even though I didn't want to. 
my pastor was like, no, you don't, you don't, don't have to. I couldn't hear him. So finally he convinced me to go to the police station with him. This is something you can do. And I'll tell you what the police did for me. They won't tell your partner, no one's gonna know, but you can go to the police station. I went with my pastor, but you could just go by yourself or bring a friend, that's fine. It's probably better so that you don't feel alone so it can be intimidating to be sitting there with a cop. So my pastor and I went to the police station and we sat in a room, he brought me to a private room. It was just the three of us. And I told this police officer my fears, what had happened in my relationship and what I was afraid of. And he told me that I should get a restraining order and not let him come back to the house. I couldn't do it. So this man, I mean, I feel embarrassed to tell you this now. I had these two good men trying to help me and I, no, I can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. You know, at one point the officer said to me, you know, I wanna help you, I really do. He was like, but I can't move into your house with you. You have to take the step for yourself. And that's what I'm telling you too. You have to take the step for yourself. You know, this happened in August of 2019. A few months later, I had the big incident where my ex was trying to get me arrested. These people don't get better. And what the police did for me was that they sent squad cars around my house. So they said that they were gonna have a noticeable police presence so that he knew that they were there and that they were watching him. And he did, he did know that they would come around the house. Um, and that did make me feel better, but at the same time, I should have gotten the restraining order and gotten him out of the house, I didn't. But there are options for you. Definitely tell somebody, if you're afraid, tell somebody so that they know to watch out for you to make sure that you're all right. There are people out there that can help you, really. Now, something else to consider with these types of relationships when, they, when you know who they are and you're not with them anymore, some of the things that they might do that you need to be prepared for is they could harass and stalk you. It's very common for them to try to intimidate you because they, they don't want you gone. Now, remember, a narcissist can't love you, but they do need you for supply. So they need you back. If they don't have other supply, you know, they're gonna do something to get you back. They're gonna hoover you. But, if, but for a narcissist, they don't understand because they don't know love. They don't know how to win somebody back. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll threaten you, they'll harass you. They'll send you in a barrage of emails, text messages, voicemails. This is what they do. And then when that doesn't work, then they'll start love bombing you. They'll start telling you how much they love you, how much they want to be back in the relationship and you know how they're gonna change. And then when that doesn't work, They'll go right back to the abusive text. This is what they do. You are on this roller coaster of emotions. You can't, they're, even when you're not with the person, they're not allowing you to have stability in your life. This is why it's so crucial when you understand who the person is to take the steps to end the relationship. I know it might take time and that's fine, but the reality is this is your future. It's like anything, if somebody else has already experienced it, I've already experienced this. Don't go as far as I have. Don't make these same mistakes. Don't tell yourself, well, it's gonna be different for me. You know, my, my husband, my wife isn't that bad, or they're, they're changing, I know they're changing. Maybe they just have their blue contacts in. If somebody is a narcissist, you do not have a sustainable relationship. It just can't. You know, narcissists also will use their kids. They don't have any qualms about using their kids to try to get you back. You know, they'll try to use guilt. Oh, the poor kids, you know, now they're not gonna, they're gonna have a broken family now. And I'm trying to change, you know, I, I've stopped drinking at my ex right now. He's telling me that he's an AA and he's, you know, he's working the steps. And even he loves me. He told me this recently, you know, that he loves me. When I didn't respond to that, he cut me off again and now he's not talking to me. This is very typical behavior. You know, they will, they're not, you know, narcissists are kind of lazy. They will, and they'll try, you know, maybe if I throw in I love you out there, they'll react to that. Or maybe if I tell them in a change or whatever, they'll try anything, but their heart's not in it. They don't really care. They just want you to roll over and be the way that you were in the past. For you to change and for you to be a strong person and for you to say, no, this is not what's going to happen in my, in my life. This is what they want. They want you to just roll over. If you don't, they don't know what to do. And they'll endlessly try to harass you into taking them back. This is what they want. That's their motive. So it's crucial to stay strong. Don't let them see that you're upset. That's another thing. Narcissists love supply. 
good or bad supply. They just need somebody to be paying attention to them. So if you are distraught, if you're upset, if you're crying, begging them not to call you anymore, they will get off on that. So it's crucial to protect yourself in any way that you can. But if you give them anything, any hope, any thought that, oh, maybe they're getting to you, you it's going to start all over. Eventually, a narcissist will move on. They won't have a choice. How long that lasts, though, really depends on the individual narcissist, very sadly. You know, narcissists get away with abuse very often because they get involved with empaths or they get involved with codependents who see the best in everybody. But what happens when, when you are with somebody and you feel bad for them or you, you, know, you think, oh, maybe they are changing or maybe we could still be friends, you're giving them more power over you. That's the only thing that is happening. Narcissists are evil and they can't be in your life if you want to have any stability in your life, if you want to have any positivity in your life. I know not everybody wants to hear that, but I'm really, I'm your friend. I'm telling you this. I've learned the hard way. So many people have learned the hard way. If this is you, please put in the comments, you know, that you had to learn the hard way too. This happens to many of us, but it doesn't have to happen to everybody. You can take a stand for yourself. You don't have to do it today, but just start thinking about it. This person is not who they say they are. Remember me with the brown eyes wearing the blue contacts. I don't really have blue eyes. They're not really a loving spouse. They're not really a loving father. It's so crucial to understand that. So thank you again, everybody, for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't already, please do so. I have a lot of good content coming up and I actually have coming up a little um, surprise that I'm going to be showing in my, well, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing a collab with somebody. So that is coming up as well. So look forward to that. I think you'll be surprised when you find out who it is. And um, I guess that's it. I hope everybody has a great day, a great weekend. It's Friday and I will see you all on Monday if all goes well. God bless.